The Kenwood THD75 is a brand new handheld radio that boasts a ton of additional features that you don't necessarily get with a traditional handheld, including a terminal node controller built in, a KISS TNC, keep it simple stupid, that passes AX25 packets from either USB or Bluetooth from a computing device out and into the airwaves. I had a bit of a kerfuffle getting it to work when we were doing the after chat. It's kind of a place where hams help hams by doing a live Q&A. We go for a couple of hours. It happens every Saturday after my main live stream. So about 6.30 until question mark, question mark, and they they, they go way too late sometimes. Yeah. But regardless. Oh my goodness, YouTube and everyone else still watching. I can't believe I did the thing. I was like, wait, I know, I knew, I knew this. Like, okay. Here's here's a here's a learning thing for everybody. I was daily driving the D74 for a year and I was doing packet winlink on the Jankopo the original Jankopotamus for that whole time and I totally forgot about the VAR FM component to it. Yeah, cuz it's a TNC. So there you go. We all, <laughs> we all make mistakes. Anyway, we'll sort this out. I'll make a nice tight video that that answers all these questions but that's why we do the live streams is that we can sometimes work out problems and you know we, we we may not answer it live but it makes a good video on the back but regardless uh, i got trouble i got stuck when i was setting that up i was trying to use vara fm and that's the wrong thing so let's say this right up front so we make sure we're clear you can use vara fm with just about any handheld but if you want to use packet you have to use a tnc and that's what this kenwood does is it uses packet packet radio to make that happen. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. It's actually fairly straightforward, although there is a decent amount of steps that you have to perform both on the radio and on your laptop. And yes, I appreciate the hilarity that is using a $750 radio and having it connect to a $75 laptop uh, via Bluetooth. The irony is not lost on me. Let's go take a look at the desktop and I'll show you how to get this set up. First and foremost, if you're paying $750 on any kind of radio, you owe it to yourself in getting only the finest uh, containers to keep it in. So here is the D75, and we need to set a couple of things on the radio before we dive into packet setup and using this as a data device. So uh, let's bring our bag back and clean this up a little bit. Very nice, very nice. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, that's not a scratch. Okay, good. Okay, anyway, let's turn it on. Here's the button on the side. Now, I'm going to be referencing instructions that came from a Hotel Bravo 9 Oscar Delta India's blog, or at least where I can get you a handy dandy list. So if you don't, you know, if you want something to reference this while watching the screen, the link is in the description. You can take a look at it that way. So a couple things to note when you're playing around with any of the Kenwood radios is that there's gonna be a menu button and an F button. When you hit menu, the main items of the menu will show a flashing number in the top. So that's the fifth menu item, which makes sense if we go to one, two, three, four, five, right? Five. Well, the instructions for this how-to document tell you to go to nine, which is settings. And then now you go to the second number. So we're one layer down, go to eight, interface and then go to zero and verify that it's COM AF, Bluetooth for PC output. This is for GPS. You may not want to use this. Uh, you can, and it's okay. In fact, you can switch these back and forth, which I have done. PC output is sometimes needed for GPS or APRS, right? So keep that in mind. In this case though, we're gonna go to KISS and we wanna make sure that this is set to Bluetooth and that DVDR is also set to USB. Again, this is for digital voice. You don't necessarily need this for using the radio. Uh, normally just keep it in KISS. Okay, okay, hit okay. Now you lock those in. The next step, we need to go back, back again, back again. Now we're up at the main line menu. Go to menu item five. So from the APRS top menu, so go into five, and then go down to zero, basics, go, you know, leave it where it's at, zero, and then go down to five, and data speed, so this is going to be dependent on if you are on 70 centimeters or two meters. Now, with the data modes changing thanks to the symbol rate limit change, we might very soon be doing 
12, uh, 9, 9,600 BPS on 2 meters. But right now, if you're using 2 meters, you might as well set it to 1,200 BPS because that's what most of the Winlink nodes are using. And then you can go ahead and lock that in. So back out of that, we want to also check and make sure that 506 beacon, whoop, basic settings, 6, band data. We're going to use channel A. You can use channel B if you want. I, I just use channel A, and sometimes I just uh, I set it into single mode instead of dual mode just to make it easy. So there's that. Let's get out of there. Now, something that you might as well set since we're doing this, GPS, we're going to go into basic settings. You need to have GPS on, particularly if you're going to do APRS, which, I mean, that's, that's kind of why you want this radio. APRS, packet capability. That's the game, right? So leave that on. We're going to go to one. We're going to leave the position to GPS. So ambiguity, in my case, uh, you would put this on if you wanted to be a little bit more stealthy in what your location is when you're beaconing your location. If I'm doing a live stream, I almost always have ambiguity on, so I'm not just doxing myself. But normally leave this off. And then under operating mode, you want to have it on to normal. Battery save is auto. So there you go. Good, good. And last but not least, go to PC output on. Again, if you want to give your computer time via GPS, you would use this capability, which can be helpful for some things. Under sentence, the, re the guide says to turn all activated. Um, but in my case, I've only ever had to use the ones that are default standard here. I didn't mess with it. Uh, you can do this. If you run into trouble, you, you will need to turn these on. But for the sake of it, I'm just following the guide exactly to the letter just to make it easy. So there you go. That's the setup. Now, to put this radio into the mode of using the KISS TNC, you're going to hit the F button. Go to 5 APRS. So now it's APRS 12. And then hit it again. And now you're KISS 12. So this means it's going to try and connect via KISS over whatever method you set, USB or Bluetooth. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you how to make this function now with your ready-to-go Kenwood. If you're following along at home, you probably got to the part of the guide where it's talking about pairing mode. And it's pretty straightforward, but I'm going to show you uh, at least what I had to do to get the ball rolling. So over on the Kenwood, you're going to make sure that you're going to go to the Bluetooth setting and then on your PC, you got to follow that up with some other work. So let's go to menu. We're going to go to the gear. So that's nine. We're going to go to Bluetooth, which is option three. And then we're going to go down to device. Sorry, not device search. Pairing mode. Pairing mode is going to put this into a 60 second listening for Bluetooth. While in pairing mode, you got about 60 seconds or so. Go down to your dashboard and hit Bluetooth devices. And you can add a Bluetooth device. Add a Bluetooth device again, clicking there, once your computer gets all ahead of itself or straightforward. And you want Bluetooth mice, keyboards, pens, audio device, other. And then it's going to go through and it's going to show you the D75. I already have the D75 selected, but basically once you hit the D75, hit OK, you will see on the radio that it'll say, hey, you got an ID something something coming through. And the ID should match on the computer and on the device. So go back to the computer, approve the connection, and then approve the connection here using the AB button on your radio. And that will sync it up for Bluetooth connection. And you know you've done it right because when you get out of here, go ahead and run Device Manager, which I'll show you. Hit the Windows key. Just start typing device. Hit Enter. And you should see under Ports, Serial over Bluetooth. And there should only be two. And that was one of the things we ran into when I was doing the live stream. I think I think it's possible that the Kenwood devices, if you have a D74 and a D75, might interfere with each other. So if you're going from a D74 to a D75, make sure you change and disconnect entirely the 74 from the computer so that you no longer see it in your device manager. Right? Right. Okay. Once you have that done, we can go back over to the instructions which is going to say that we need to go into the host software, device software, blah, blah, blah. Now, highly recommended that 
If you have a D74, you do need to upgrade your firmware. The 75 should not have that problem. FYI, there's also drivers that you should run. So make sure you do follow the link for the drivers and run them, install them, etc. I tried it both ways and I didn't have a problem, but uh, there's never not a reason to load the manufacturer drivers. You're just asking for a problem later. In some cases, insofar as like your Windows will try and apply a wrong driver to your device. And that just leads to a bunch of other nonsense of trying to back a driver out. Trust me when I say you do not want to mess around the drivers. Just do exactly what Kenwood says here and, and any other of the radio manufacturers for this uh, matter. So anyway, all right, so WinLink. This is a very specific uh, how-to, right? It goes straight to packet. So I'm going to show you a little bit about WinLink for those of you that are a bit new to it. There is more to WinLink than just this. WinLink is like an email client. Let's go back to the Jankopotamus and we'll take a look at that. From your Jankopotamus, go out of the device manager here. You no longer need that. WinLink Express is something that you download from the internet. Yes, download it. You probably also want to download Vara FM. Vara FM is paid. You can trial run Vara FM, but there is a paid for license and it actually unlocks faster speeds. That's something that you will use in the future with other radios, but you might want to check it out too if you've got an HF radio or a radio that just has a sound card that you can tap into. But for what we're doing today, WinLink Express is all you need. And yes, you can get a license for this as well, which if you end up using this a lot, I highly recommend you get it because it's just going to, uh, I don't know, it funds up your, your amateur radio hobby a bit from my point of view. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit so you can see everything on the screen while also having the radio here over like a so. So I'm going to go to packet mode, right? So I already have this set up for me. There are a couple of options on how you can use WinLink. You can do Telnet, Pactor. You can use Vara HF, Vara FM. There's lots of different capabilities, but for this test, this application, we're going to be using Packet WinLink. I already have this set up. If you are new to WinLink, I have a video that shows the first time setup for this. If you go to settings, it will go to WinLink Express setup, which will first time request you fill out some of this information. You will need to create a WinLink account. So before you go into the field with no signal or anything like that, highly recommended that you just go ahead and set up WinLink your account before going off grid. Anyway, go ahead and follow the video that I will be linking in the description to do that. Anyway, let's do packet session. So open a packet session. And we're going to go to settings. This is a first time setup kind of thing. Now, you will basically copy this identically, except for one thing. Referencing your device manager, I found that I used the second port that was created. Your first and second, possibly even your third port is going to vary depending on how you set those interfaces when we are at that part of the installation setup, et cetera. So just keep that in mind. You're going to be using the second port. Got it? Good. Okay. Baud rate is going to be 1200, 1200 baud because we're on two meters, 400, 128. Just follow this. You could literally just screenshot this and copy it verbatim. But I'm going to go back to 23. I'm going to hit update and it's going to refresh itself. It's going to make a new session. And it's going to think everything's good. It's going to initialize that port on 23. While you're here, uh, there's actually one step we should hit. And it's something that might make your connection speed a little bit faster, depending on your laptop. Hit the Windows key again. Go to Device Manager. So type in Device. Find that port, that port that was created. And in this case, I recommend 23 is the one that works for me. You're likely going to have different numbers, but whichever one is the incremented by one. So if you have 10 and 11, go ahead and go to the properties for 11. Go to properties, port settings, and then set this to 19200. I found that when they match in WinLink Express, it seems to do a little bit better. This is an optional step, but if you do it, I haven't seen any problems with it. You kind of just want these to match. So if you want to run 96, that's fine. Just make sure it matches on the USB side as well. So update. Okay. Now, the next thing you're going to do, and, and possibly WinLink has already prompted you to update channels and do some other stuff like that. Just go ahead and let WinLink do whatever it wants. It wants to update the software. That's fine. Go ahead and allow it to do that. Hit channel selection. From channel selections, you're, I recommend if you're doing packet, you probably want to focus on this 
kilometer distance from your home. In this case, we have a KK6 CKK. Uh, they're on 70 centimeters though, and right now my radio is just set up for two meters, right? Let's get out of menu. Um, for packet, we're going to be using, we're going to put it into KISS 12 mode, which represents 1200 baud. That's the KISS mode we want to be in for this, for uh, packet to work. And we want to probably pick something that's in two meters. So why don't we go to this WD6 CDN. Uh, so I will select this guy. So now it's asking me 145050. So hit the enter button, the center button on the radio. 145050. It is listed right here on the application if you don't remember it and you should be able to hit start and the radio should say hey bluetooth connection incoming and it did so it did a bit of a transmit that was that red bar you saw so it is attempting to transmit that is exactly what we needed to happen so huzzah everything's working but what you're going to find and as we're seeing right now i'm not getting anyone back nobody's coming back to me so that was a disconnected attempt and it says disconnected reported right here so we got to go back into channel and we got to find the next one so this is going to be ke6 vvz10 and we need to change the frequency 144970 so there's that and we hit start make sure you are transmitting at high power you use the F key and the high-low button to set that. You'll know you're in high power because it'll say H there in the corner, and, and that's definitely what you want it to be in. But hey, guys, we're still not getting uh, a connection over packet, which this can happen. This is kind of what happens with a, a lot of Windlink stuff. And in fact, I'm, I'm even curious if my antenna has not... Oh, well, interesting. We <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. Doesn't look like it. Looks like a no-go. If this was working as expected, there'd be a red line and then like an immediate green line of receiving a signal coming back to us. And that would kick off the packet process in which we could then, you know, get our emails. So that's fine. We'll go to the next one, channel selection. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go to dual now. So if you hold down F, there you go. Now we just have the dual channel. We want the A channel for the KISS 12, so 144.970. And I'm going to go to the next 2 meter one, which was this, uh, let's see, 970. We were already on that. This W6HBR, let's go for that. So we're going to set this to 145090 and kick it off. Okay, so there we go. We have connection. So we're connecting to the Huntington Beach Races.org group, and I'm now going to start receiving all my emails. Maybe. Yep. Ah, we got a disconnection. Usually FF is a failure, so that was not a successful connection, and that happens, so let's go. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it sorts itself out. Oh, maybe not. Sometimes FF is usually a declaration that you're not being heard or disconnected. Okay, so that failed. And it was disconnected. So let's uh, let's try a different channel. We'll probably come back to that one though, because sometimes if you get it, you know, you might as well just try again. So RTE is the next one, 25 kilometers away though. So no, maybe we're not going to be able to make it. But let's try him. 14590, which is the same channel that we're already on, or same frequency. Let's hit start and see what happens. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, we found a good station. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So if you, uh, if you have a good station, you download the emails pretty quickly. So this is everybody that I asked at the end of the live stream to uh, send me a, a message. So here you go, guys. All your subjects are getting shown. And now it's a... Uh... <laughs> That's a lot of data. Okay, now we're actively receiving, and you can see it. 
you see them pop up. So you kind of get the headers, and then after you get the headers, then it goes and builds all the rest of the messages. I'm going to lower this now. You get the idea of what it sounds like. It's loud. Uh, that might be it. Is it? I thought we had more than that. Felt like more. Okay. Well, that's doing its thing. I'm going to go ahead and go to, did you get your email? Subject, did you get the D75 working at? Heh, heh, heh. Mark Grimes, K06CBD. So I will go ahead and right-click, reply to all. Yes, indeed. D E. T H D seventy five seventy three Josh. And then from here I'll just post to Outbox. So you can see my Outbox number went up. We seem to have lost that station though. They were so loud and now they've just disappeared on us, which happens. I've had a difficult time with uh with using Packet recently, and I'm I'm curious if it's actually my antenna. I've had that antenna up for probably five years or so, and I, I think the weather strip or the weather ceiling is great, but I may have to go do a deeper dive on that. So let's let's see if we can just dial back in here. Not the same signal as it was before. I'm half the signal I was before. So I was able to find it. <laughs> I think uh, I think I had a problem with my coax connector actually. So we we got that sorted out. You can see I'm I'm pulling in all my my stuff right here and. In fact, uh, all the rest of the emails are, are coming in, at least they should be, if we go through this. Coax connectors go bad, and I think it was probably right here on this little elbow. You can see it's kind of bent, but that seemed to be my problem. Maybe don't go with the ones that have the pigtails on it. You can see that. It also is sending my email right now. I already replied to one of the emails, so there you go. It looks like it is working. I hope that helped. I hope that explains the issue. And again, if you'd like a deeper dive in what WinLink is all about, go check out the video in the description or in the cards that may be right over there. As a complete side note, as we wrap this up, uh, do note that with the, the Kenwood here, see that signal quality, the, the, the S meter? That's also a really handy feature if you're going to track down RFI, you're going to use a Yagi or something like that. Having a really good S meter like that that shows you nine, see that S9? S7, all that stuff. See, important stuff, important features that you probably need. $750 need? That's up for you to decide. I should note, I haven't been doing this for very long, and the battery was already dead. I had to throw it on the the 12, the 13.8 the volt power supply to start charging it. And good news, it will operate when it's running off of that 12 volt supply it's probably bypassing the charger completely right now just running direct at least i, I hope probably simultaneously doing a little bit of both but regardless uh that was kind of interesting the battery went like full red and I, I feel like i've only been out here for an hour attempting to make these packet connections interesting more testing to come i think on this one I may actually be purchasing this just so I can continue the testing here because I haven't even gotten to take it to the field yet. And that new mic hole there is different from the 74. I'm wondering if the audio quality is going to be a bit better than this. It was kind of the middle of the road between the ICOM ID52, I think having the best transmitted audio quality, and then the Kenwood and then the Yesu. That's a personal subjective test, I know, but... Yeah, more to come on this for sure. I think somebody sent me a massive meme or something like that because this is still going and I don't know what possibly was said. Now I'm really pot committed. I want to see what this is. But you know, I've been receiving this for, uh, let's see, quite a while. And it's it's for, for Packet over WinLink. It's it's actually a decent, uh, decently large email. So I guess stay tuned to the end here and find out what it is. This was the attachment they sent. They sent, they did, they sent a, they sent a meme. Thanks. Th thank you. <laughs> K-O-6-C-D-B. Th thank you, buddy. <laughs> now, if you'd like to do this on your own without having to buy the Kenwood, you can. You go buy something called a MobiLink TNC, likely the fourth edition model. You can do it with the third edition, but the third edition has a USB micro instead of a USB-C. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference between the devices. You can also just use an audio interface and manually control the radio for the frequency that you're going to be operating on. That works too, and that's a fine way to go. Anyway, I hope this helps. Please
please comment in the area below here and let me know your thoughts. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.